everyone. Today we are going to walk through a math PBA. PBA stands for Performance-Based Assessment. These were recently, the practice tests were recently released on the PARC website. Uh, previously there were just the end of year tests. Now they've got both. All right, so to get to the test, I like to just Google it. So PARC practice test. All right, and today we're doing math. We're going to select a grade. I'm going to stick with seventh grade because that's what I've done in the other walkthroughs. So the end of year, the one we've done previously. Today we're going to look at the PBA. And you see it gives you some options here. I'm just going to do the computer-based practice test, but you can also print off the paper-based um, in both the regular and the large print. And then we've got, it looks like they haven't gotten it up yet, the screen reader version. Um, one of the accessibility features that's available to all students is to have it read to you um, via a screen reader. So that will be nice for students to practice if they fall in that boat. And then we have the Braille form, which is also not ready. So we're going to do the computer-based test. I'm going to click on it and notice it skipped right past the screen for um, the login because these are available to everyone. You don't need a login. All right. And it tells us we're about ready to start our test. So we've got the seventh grade math PBA practice test. It tells us that there's a non-calculator section and a calculator section. But remember that students who have calculators on their IEP um, are able to use an approved calculator on the non-calculator section. And you need to check your test administrator's manuals because there's different calculator requirements for uh, up to seventh grade and then eighth grade and then high school. So each group of kids uses a different type of calculator. So we're going to start the test. Okay, and it's giving us the direction telling us how many questions there are, it's going to give you know, basic directions, telling the kids to make sure they uh, choose an answer and make their best guesses. It's talking about scratch paper and the equation editor and talks again about the calculator. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we have the first question. And you notice up here it tells us it's just question one of six. And remember that there are certain features up here at the top. Right now we're using the pointer. We also have a protractor that we can move around the screen if we need to. And a ruler, which isn't going to be helpful with this question. But um, We do have an answer eliminator. So some students I could anticipate would want to use that. So as I'm working out my answer, I can say, nope, not that one, nope, not that one. One thing that I think some students will think is tricky is if now I'm like, oh, my answer is B, it's not going to let me click on B until I go back up here and unselect that or reselect pointer. Okay? So notice also on this screen, we've got the exhibit, so it gives us a reference sheet but I think you have to work with your kids to make sure that they know that it's over here. Okay. Um, other features up here is you can change the background and foreground color on the practice test. And remember that this is an accessibility feature that can be accessed for any student, whether or not they have an IEP. So what that means is that you need to figure out ahead of time. They won't be able to play with us during the test. It'll be set ahead of time. So if your student wants to use black on magenta, then that has to be set up in the personal needs pri profile ahead of the test. So for the practice test, though, students can play with it and figure out which one they like the best. I think all of those are distracting. I'm going to go back to the regular. We also have the magnifier, which can be used to magnify. And then we have the line reader. Turn the mag. Notice how you have to turn some things off. It will automatically go away. We have the line reader. So if your student wants to just look at part of the question. Again, that can be turned on or off. So let's go ahead and go on to our next question. Okay. Um, notice this is a drag and drop. So again, I'm not going to try to solve this. I'm just going to show you how the functionality works. So I'm going to drag and drop to 
transform my equation. If I want to change my answer, I can either drag, this won't let me, I've got to drag this out and drag the new one in. Um, if I'm not sure about my answer, I can always flag it to go back later. There's some of these have seen three different formats so far. So we have the multiple choice, we had this drag and drop, and now we've got where we're going to enter our answer. So different formats of questions. We've got another multiple choice. Oh, here's the equation editor. All right. So when we enter our equation, I think that I'm going to uh, suggest that the student kind of has the, what they want to enter first written on their scratch paper. Okay. And you're going to actually enter your equation. So let's say I want to enter a fraction. I'd be like, I would have to click the button first. One over two. Let's say I want to say times. I want to do a mixed number. Notice how you have to click these first. So I can't just type in, um, I can't make it a fraction after I already typed it in. So two, let's do seven. I'm using my keyboard to move my screen. Equals eight. And again, I'm just making this up. Okay, so we can clear it. We can undo. We can redo. We can use all these different things. Again, this is another good thing for students to practice ahead of time. Okay. Here's another one of those tricky questions that we haven't seen yet today, but we've seen on other tests before, where you have to select each correct answer. So the answer out of these five choices, A, B, C, D, E, there could be two things, there could be three things, there could be four things. I guess there could even be five. Okay. Now, notice it tells me here, it says I finished the non-calculator section, and it gives me an option to review my answers or continue. I believe that once you press continue, you can't go back. So let me review my answers. And you can see that I answered all of them. Uh, we can go back and review our questions. Okay, let's say that's fine. And I can end the section. It's going to prompt me again. I'm going to click continue. Okay, and here's my warning. It's going to say that I'm not allowed to come back once I leave. Yes, I'm sure. All right, and then we've got the calculator section. And notice now we have our five function calculator because this is a seventh grade test. So the calculators that they can use in Maryland anyway are the four function cal calculators with both the percentage and the square root button. Okay, and then once here in Maryland, when you get up to eighth grade, use a scientific calculator and in high school use graphing calculator. Okay, so I can use the calculator. I can select it as much as I want. All the other features are still here. All right, this one we've got a drop down, which again is a different question type. Let's keep going. Select each correct pair of links. I've seen that one before. Notice that if I don't answer, it still lets me move on. So that's one thing. It's not going to give me any kind of error message or anything like that. It's just going to let me keep going. So it's important that the students understand that. Okay. All right. All right. We've got more drag and drop. This one's asking what the order is from greatest to least. So it's going to let me reorder. I haven't seen this kind of question before. So it's going to let me reorder them to get them from greatest to least. And we've got another equation editor. All right, and then we have this next type of question. So another one where they have to <coughs> they have to use the equation editor. Notice this is a different, a little bit different type of question. It's talking about, um, it shows you a student's error in their work. And what you're supposed to do, it says identify the step in which Chris made her first error. So you're actually finding this student's error. And those of you who've worked with other tests before, I mean, obviously this is a really different type of question. So after identifying the first step with the error, write the corrected steps in the final answer below. You can see we've even got different math symbols here. We've got more choices. 
And remember again, this is the seventh grade test. All right, so we've got a part A, part B. Again, this uh, menu of different types of functions. I'm gonna keep moving, see if we see anything else we haven't seen before. Yeah, see lots of these questions where they have to not just enter their answer, but they have to also enter their explanation. So this one asks for an answer, an explanation, and an example. Okay, another part A or part B. All right, let's keep flipping here. All right, now this does tell me when I get to the screen that my section has eight unanswered questions. So I can either go back and look at them or I can submit my final answer. And as you can guess, once I submit my final answer, I'm not going to be able to come back. Okay, and that's it for that practice test. Again, this was the seventh grade performance-based assessment on the park site. Again, remember that there are the performance-based assessments and the end-of-year ones. Thank you, everyone.